How's it going guys? This is Ben with Get Bent Moto. Uh, we'll get right back to those two bikes. Before we kick this off, I want to kind of let you know what's going on. Um, I'm going to start a little spotlight series on bikes, owners, builds, adventures on bikes. Um, as most of you know, I do a lot of photography and a little bit of videography with motorcycles. Um, but usually all you see there is a quick post of a picture on Instagram, or if you're one of the people that orders prints, a print. So what I'm trying to do here is bring those stories and those bikes and those builders to life a little more um, by incorporating some video with that. And so we're going to start this spotlight series where I record video and give these builders a chance to actually talk about what they have going on with the bikes, as well as some of my photography that I'm doing as part of this. Um, we're going to kick this series off actually with my brother. Um, I got a chance to go to SoCal just a few weeks ago. And he's got two ridiculous bikes, both a Dyna and an FXR. So we sat down, talked details of the bikes, the parts on those bikes, his vision for those bikes, um, how they got from either the showroom floor or the junkyard or wherever they came from to the final product that everybody sees and loves. Um, enjoy. All right, dude. Uh, we've got your 2015. What is it? What is it still called? A lowrider now? Is it called something different at this point? Anyway, started as Mixy a different things. Yeah, started at a 2015 lowrider, right? Yep. And we've got this FX DLT. I don't know what it is now. Anyway, let's talk about how we got from uh, the showroom floor at HD to like what this monster FXRT is. FXRT slash some Defender, something else going on. So how you want to know how I got from here to there? Yeah, so what, when you started, what was your kind of what was your thought process? Did you have like an end product in mind or was it just kind of happening as it went? I, I did have an end product in mind. It wasn't this, to be honest with you. The whole idea was to make a uh, light, go fast kind of uh, Don at the time. It started off with Don Low Rider, kind of had the theme, just do some uh, first off, do suspension build on it, um, I'd do some brakes, and then motor work, obviously exhaust, and then tie in the handlebars and pretty much leave it like that and have a ripper for around town. And uh, that was the original idea. No crazy paint jobs, nothing to it, just fast, you know, street sleeper, rip off the line kind of bike. That was the original plan. Obviously it morphed, I think it's like the fifth generation of this build right now though. So who knows where my mind went when I started this thing. I knew first off, I know you had, you went from the stock black paint job. Yeah, black, to I the, came in with the black with the red pin stripe yeah, yeah. on it. and you it. had the custom reddish, maroonish, crimson color, which I actually thought you were crazy for changing initially. So I know you wound up heading back to that. Did you have the fairing with the first well, paint job? How it started out was the black. I had the T-Sport fairing. I had the T-Sport fairing with the leather pro zone, aluminum swing arm, big motor, and basically bars and seat, and that was it. And then when I did the second generation or i guess you could say third generation of the builds when i uh was actually initially was planning on building the fxrt bike but i didn't have two bikes at the time now that i have the fxr kind of you know probably would have swapped them but the time it was building this and fxrt fairings and lowers and stuff were coming out and they wouldn't all out yet so we kind of matched it to build a basically a mix of a bike that i wanted so everything on here is pretty much how i would have had the best of both worlds in it you know, the bigger motor, FXRT, uh, uh, fairing and lowers, the Defender bags on it, and kind of had the first original was basically a maroon version, red, candy apple red, kind of whatever you see it in the sunlight from Andy at Flying Irons, painted it for the first time and fell in love with it. And should have probably kept it, but did a couple road trips on it and had more uh, just rock dings and trash on it. So, hence the second build. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When you first told me you were gonna paint it this from the candy apple red, I thought it was retarded. I thought it was just stupid. But actually, this one is pretty awesome. Like it's a lot more flash, but it's still pretty awesome. I think everyone that I told the scheme of this, including my wife, disliked it, and no one thought about it. But I kind of went with him with the idea. It was after an old Ford I'd seen I liked and I had, and I wanted to kind of replicate it. And then Andy took obviously my idea and made it completely different. When you get a chance to get some pictures, you get some tones in here from the cream. It's like a vanilla cream color in there with the same original red. We kind of brightened it up a little bit with the uh, gold uh, flake in there to match the uh, gold swing arm, luminal swing arm, and the tubes and the Cooper accents we had in the bike with the gold hinges on the bags. It 
just kind of transformed from, I think every nut, nut and bolt's been touched on this bike some way, somehow, and probably upgraded. And some of the parts on here, they don't even think they make, it just kind of was one-off pieces that I had to get done for the whole build, motor, everything. How's that big, bigger fairing been? Is that probably the, I know visual-wise, that's definitely the biggest change in the bike in terms of actually performance and the ride and how is it, how's it compared to all the other upgrades? I like it from the looks perspective, you know, and blocking wind at long trips, it's, it's all, it does its, does its job. But at the same time, I kind of like that slim, sleek fear, you know, it's hence why you have the FXR behind you, I did. But looks wise, handle wise, wind wise, it, you, you can't beat it. You know, splitting lanes and doing some crazy stuff in traffic, it kind of gets a little bit, uh, you know, blind spot-ish. But other than that, it's solid mount. Ride's good, no uh, performance issues with it for sure. So, I'm sure this is the biggest question you get, so I'm gonna ask it. What's going on with the motor down there? What are There's you... a lot of things going on with the motor. We went through several stages. Uh, Ghetto Choppers, Tim and Chris there kind of built this, uh, some fueling parts. It started off with uh, some head work. Uh, I can't remember the set of cams. I think I've been through three or four different cam sets to kind of get it together with race set. The whole motor has been pretty much fully taken apart. Um, valve, valve springs, port and polished, uh, full cams, jugs. Obviously, it's I can't really give you the exact numbers right now because it's been changed so many times. We're still trying to play with it as it goes along. You know, Jim's trap door, uh, Brock's performance, swing arm obviously had a new clutch put in it, motor mounts done. Every valve, every spring, lifters, push rods, everything in the motor's pretty much been done. It kind of a base it off, let's say like a 124 kit, but ghetto fied. Done some, Tim and Chris did some secret stuff there, a little magic on it, and it just basically created a reaper, reaper on it. It's it's pretty crazy with all the fueling cams, what fueling did to the top end of it. It's pretty amazing. You've lived down some miles too, right? It's not just... Oh, it's not a thing. I rode from here. All the way across Utah, up into Northern California, uh, Washington, Oregon, and around. You know, the bike's been, I think I'd done one of my trips, I covered almost 6,000, almost 6,700 miles on one trip on it. Yeah, so it's done, it, I built it to ride. It's not a, a trailer queen. If you get closer, you probably can see the paint chips in it to tell. It's not, <laughs> not exactly the prettiest thing sometimes. It looks good from photos, though. What are some of the what are some of the other major upgrades that you think oh, I guess make we the bike? Really, kind of major upgrades besides uh, the simple things you can't see. Obviously, it's got drop-in on uh, traction dynamic uh, front end, uh, top line gold tubes on it, um, Galfer uh, rotors. Um, we had an aluminum swing arm down the back. I think it's my third uh, aluminum swing arm. I think this is now uh, CNC Customs. They made the, the swing arm part in the back, which I had chrome and then done in the gold obviously gal for front and rear so, i had racing brothers uh let's take a break right there how did you decide to do a gold swing arm i feel like i there's probably a few out there now but i feel like this is one of the first times i've seen a, i saw a gold swing arm on a dyna how did that come about truth be told i'm gonna have to give credit to jess probably on the gold swing arm she said i had to match the gold top line tubes because top line tubes first came out i had the top lines tubes Thought gold, have some Rolexes flashing. So when I did the swing arm, her idea was to have the gold tie into the front of it. Full chain kit to go along with that too, Yeah, correct? full gold chain, everything on it. All right, what you got next? So we started off with the uh, top, it was a Clockworks windshield, obviously, an RWD uh, fairing, JD, custom fabs, lowers, we're going into the, the, the bar setup. The bar setup obviously is a Lucky Days uh, riser combo. I did the 12 inch pullbacks, the gold legs, uh, red tops with a little black uh, riser crowns and their black riser bar. It's like a net of like 15 and a half inches tall. So, which is usually a bit tall for you, right? Most of your other sets yeah, have been a little shorter. Yeah, most of all of them have always been, I've been usually ran around the 13 inch category. So to go to 12s was a kind of a, scary movement but so far you know i like the feel now that i use it mostly for just cruising around it kind of sets my hands up a little more higher give me a little bit better better break in the um elbows which for me at five foot ten if you want to be generous it's a perfect setup strangely or not 
and then obviously you got the tank, the paint. We already mentioned the paint. Uh, got in the Lucky Dave's custom seat. I did the brown on back and the uh, red diamond gripper on the front. Had some custom logos put into it. And obviously hid back there is the Racing Brothers 14 inch custom. They did it went off for me for the uh, 14 inch air cannons. So I'm running, running those now. And then obviously uh, Villain to Heroes did the Defender bags for me, which I had uh, Andy at Flying and Iron Paint. And there's just so many details we you can't really see with the camera to get in to talk about. You know, I did a Stealth made the exhaust, which I had polished. It's uh, kind of turning into a nice uh, gold once I get it all burned into it a little bit. So this is going to sound ridiculous, but from riding this thing, one of the first things I notice is those mini floorboards. They're just, it's, it's like the simplest thing, but I don't know, it just, yeah, they, it's they, like, it's like some, it's a weird comfort factor. Oh yeah, I, I love them. I kind of was going to do a different setup. I think these were one of the original, like bigger floorboards that came out. And uh, they're obviously San Diego uh, uh, Customs, local uh, dealer around here as well. Most of all the local shops I tried to use on the bike had, had them out. They have a couple other ones now, but if you have any problems with your feet, you can't beat the comfort of doing full boards on them on this bike, especially for long distance cruising riding. It is life changing. So you also, with the fairing, you went with a bigger headlight as well, right? I did. It's a seven inch uh, headlight, uh, Speed King Steve. Uh, Produced the headlight. Obviously, I got some, most of a lot of the parts from um, Speed King Steve. So uh, Steve hooked me up with uh, the headlight, his headlight, and obviously his tail light. Integrated blinkers and everything too. Integrated correct? blinkers and all with it. You want to fire up for everybody? Yeah, fire up. Awesome, dude. One down, right. another one, one down. to go. Another one to go. go. Anything else on this one you want to point out? I know there's like a ton on here, but. Well, there's so much that for a short video, you can't really get into it, you know, just it's a dream to build a bike, finally have the opportunity to get it done. And a lot of, uh, like I said, ghetto choppers, a lot of sh local people helped me out getting it done. And it turned out to be one of my dream bikes build. I think it's probably everyone else's dream bike too by the, you know how it goes but uh, it's so many things I could point out and I would probably forget too many people that helped me out so I won't cool. bother pointing one person out and if people have questions don't oh, ask right yeah don't ask <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the answer no yeah, ask away I try to help everyone out I obviously went through a lot more money and details trying to build this bike than they would have to so I have no problem answering someone's questions because they could probably do it a lot cheaper than I did I learned the hard way when pieces wouldn't to be found and came out beautiful but i definitely don't mind helping you out cool all right man let's get them right. swapped out and let's talk about that monster back there that pretty that's the hidden gem Number two, it's a 91 FXR, right? 91 FXR. I actually think this is the build to talk about. It's probably a bigger and better build, and I would say my Dyna, even though my Dyna's flashy, there is a lot to do about this bike that just doesn't see the naked eye, I guess. It's where'd you a, uh, where'd you find this bike? Cause you had it for a bit before you started on it, right? Yeah, actually, I'll give you a picture of it. It was an old, trashy red FXR. I think we got it out of uh, Chicago for. At three grand maybe it was a uh, pretty bad all frame was rusted motor was it turned over but it was not as uh, uh good as it could be but look what it turns out imagination see this is actually probably a true frame off registration 
Like that one has added on some pretty badass stuff and made it. This is a true frame off restoration. Restor restoration. I can't even talk today. The whole idea was, in my eyes, being the AJ, I wanted to build kind of like a 90s hot rod. You know, that had all the fairness. It was supposed to be slim, mean, and all motor and get up and go. So it had to have the little, the flames going in it with the full polished uh, powertrain went with it. But this is a full off, like, take it down, down, the, down the frame. Every nut and bolt was removed. Uh, obviously, same people, Tim and Chris at uh, Ghetto Choppers uh, did most of the work, helped me out with it, did all the work, really. Chris the other day did an amazing job on it. And obviously, Andy did the, uh, the paint job. So really, the, how that paint job tied in was, uh, kind of fell in love with another bike, some really the same color, had a little bit of ideas to it, and wanted to keep that 90s flamed hot rod paint job going. Yeah, and I think you and my wife and a couple cried about me choosing this, but it was kind of a, how they wanted to do it. I kind of wanted to keep that hot rod theme and leave it slim and mean. That's all, uh, was really was a power to it. Took it down the frame, obviously had the frame powder coated. Um, from San Marcos, uh, polishing, did all the powder, polishing and powder coating for me. We did a, a full on Evo SNS 113, obviously ghetto fied. Chris and Tim did some um, internal work to it to make it a little bit uh, bigger, better. Obviously, I want something to go a little faster. Obviously, we sticking with the Fueling, a local company here as well. Fueling made a custom exhaust for me. Uh, a couple other key things in there that Fueling did. We had the, uh, the wheels. Uh, swing arm, the motor, the trans, every piece of everything on it is actually full polished. It's not chrome. Uh, so for including the uh, fork braces are polished. So it's uh, pretty much done exactly the way it is. So we were rudely interrupted. I don't remember what we were talking about, to be honest. Uh, polishing? Yeah, you were talking about polishing, right? I'll say we were rudely interrupted by my son. Are you going to edit that out? I, I don't know. It depends. Yeah. Say when. Oh, we're going right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> As we were really interrupted by my son pulling up and his, and his girlfriend. We'll be walking in the camera in a second. But yeah, every little nut and bolt is uh, fully polished on it. So it's not, we did a uh, dual disc. Uh, obviously the Brent Bows in the front and rear. Brock Performance aluminum swing arm. That's adjustable from, I think, a stop to plus three inches. Uh, running Rust Wearmont design. Um, Rear suspension, obviously track dynamics, uh, front uh, drop-in cartridge kit on the front as well. Uh, have a couple of things on here. I don't like obviously fueling fueling pegs on there. Uh, every little nut and bolt on this bike has been done, as you can go through and get seen. You know, we did I did the eight-inch uh, straight risers on these from Lucky Dave's with. Uh, the orange smaller crown accents on this to match the pinstriping and the uh, paint uh, with the orange uh, fill in for the lucky days. We it's actually, it's a custom setup, right? This is a full custom setup for the risers and bars. As you see, we stripped out all these switches on the thing. We're running a performance machine, clearing it all up. All I'm running is on this side, you'll see the key switch that turns it on. No buttons, no nothing else. This is street, stripped down, slick, and lean. I like it. It looks clean. Yeah. I imagine it'd be weird looking for buttons, but in yeah, terms of too. looks, it's uh, yeah. And I will see the chain kit in the back. We're running a custom Lucky Dave Brown tuck and roll seat on this one, vice the uh, um, diamond. Galfa rotors in front and back. Yeah, I spent all this guy's inheritance on all the bikes, so when it, when I die, he gets uh, motorcycles, not money. <laughs> but uh, there's so many things on the bike that are just, when I say full off, it, you know, everything was powder coated that is back to black now. I don't know, every nut and bolt was replaced with new stuff. Aliar, you know, motor mounts, the uh, Cooney car. So, I know we're having some, uh, you're having some lifter things you're having replaced. So, is it fire upable? Is that it's allowed? Fire, it's fire upable. You can say no. 
it's fire upable. I'll fire it up and you'll hear it. We were placing some lifters just because obviously custom built motor, y'all. It, it barely has maybe 500 miles on it right now, so we're still going through to get some of the kinks I don't like out of it done. You know, every little nick and sound when you spend this much money on a bike kind of gets to the year. And like I said, Tim and Chris and them, they want to make their name on it, their, their build, they want to make it perfect right. But we'll crank it up and let you see what it sounds like. Let's do I it. Think, yeah. I mean, even with that slight tick, it yeah. sounds mean, dude. Like, oh, it does. Cool. So, I imagine if you're watching my channel on motorcycles, you probably already follow Grady. If you don't, at Grady's underscore travels. Grady's underscore travels. Lots and of bikes and traveling and. This beautiful beast. <laughs> and I didn't really go into details of everything on it because this. If you know anything about Epic Stars, you know the way they come then you will understand and really love the time and effort that the guys at uh, Ghetto Choppers put into building this and the time and thought that went into it. Like, when I say this is a full off restoration bike, I can't say this enough. This is something that would be parked in my living room for a long time to come. It is, means a lot to me on this. This one right here means a lot to me. I, I really love and it took a lot of, especially during the COVID to get it put together. It's a, one of my, I don't know, best bike out there. I'll say it. <laughs> My KTM's the most fun, but this is the best. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go get some pizza and beer. Pizza, beer? All right, we'll get these in the garage first.